What we really care about is making the cheapest possible energy. Let's talk about that for a second. The particular thing that Electroflow is going to make is something called LFP. And LFP is an electrode material. It's a lithium iron phosphate. Literally 99% of LFP is made in China today. Not a typo. 99% of LFP is made in China. It goes into half of all batteries. In order to compete, we've completely reimagined how that supply chain looks and condensed what is traditionally about a 10-step process down to just three. If we're able to achieve our goal of making this particular LFP material cheap, that is the key towards getting very abundant, very cheap energy. All right, great to see you. We're super excited to be investors uh, in Electroflow. How did you and Evan, uh, how did you meet? Uh, we met actually as postdocs both thinking that the postdoc was our last step before going to be a professor. So you can see that that did not happen. <laughs> but I think we found a path that's working really well for us. I was a battery person. Evan is a chemistry person. and um, But for the first time when we met at Stanford, we got exposed to what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Both of us sort of didn't know what entrepreneurship was, per se, before going into postdocs. We'd been so like pigeonholed into doing bench academic research that we didn't sort of have time to pop our heads up and see what else is out there. And uh, we really hit it off well. Like we um, we actually first met when our postdoc lab was hosting a holiday party. And as one does at a holiday party, we started talking about electric vehicles and batteries. <laughs> yes. So, yes. One totally does do that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we both realized like, oh man, this nerd speaks the same language as me. And uh, it sort of manifested then later and like ultimately the idea that we had for the startup. But um, yeah, over time, it just became clear to us that entrepreneurship was the wrapper that would allow us to like really pursue our dreams of inventing stuff and putting stuff in the world that really moves the needle and makes a huge impact. Um, none of us were like lithium mining experts per se when we first met, but both had a broad fascination in batteries and EVs and all the use cases that batteries will enable, like drones, robots, and grid storage. Um, but we got to thinking, like, within batteries, you know, like, what problem should we solve if we're so fascinated by the space? And kept coming to the conclusion over and over again that the raw materials that go into the batteries are really what is preventing more batteries on the grid and more EVs on the road. Let's talk about that for a second. The particular thing that Electroflow is going to make is something called LFP, uh, which isn't exactly lithium. It's lithium plus. Like, what, what, what is the plus that you add to this? And, and, and where does it all go then? An LFP is an electrode material. It's a lithium iron phosphate. So that plus is then the iron and the phosphates that get combined with the lithium to make a usable material that can be used in batteries for electrodes. Um, and, and, and which side is it, the anode or the cathode? Oh, it's the cathode. So that tends to be the cost driver of the cell, which is why it makes sense for us to tackle that specific one. Um, and that's the one that comes in its lithiated form and hence uses the lithium chemical. So we're really innovating on ways to get that lithium chemical and ways to uniquely combine them with the remaining iron and phosphate to get a usable chemical in a much simpler and cheaper way than existing methods. And, and, and what, what makes an LFP battery a good battery? I mean, people have heard of lithium ion batteries. I'm not sure people have heard of LFP batteries. Like, what makes it a good battery? Yep, yep. Um, an LFP is a subset of the broader lithium ion battery um, scope. And LFP in general is a really amazing material. It uses very abundant reagents to make the material. Iron is, I think, the most predominant like element on Earth that makes up most of the core of Earth, even. Uh, phosphate is additionally very abundant. And uh, lithium, turns out, is quite abundant as well. Um, you just need to use new methods to unlock it at a cost-effective way. Um, so right off the bat, the input materials that can make LFP are very cheap, especially as compared to other cathode chemistries that often contain things like nickel or cobalt, tend to be much more expensive to mine and process. Um, LFP uses zero nickel or cobalt, so right off the bat, you can expect, um, once you scale up production of it, the cost point of making that material is lower than competing chemistries. Um, big big and, win for LFP, big loss for the Congo. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, in the Congo, it's where a lot of the cobalt is mined, and it's really uh, notorious for its poor um, human rights and mining practices. Yes, what I hear, it's it's super ugly, yeah. 
So what, 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 what would people find LFP batteries in? You'd find it in the vast, vast majority of grid storage applications. And these days, an increasing amount of EV batteries use LFP as well. Nearly all of the batteries that go into EVs in China use LFP, and it's gradually overtaking the U.S. market as well. Um, by virtue of all the advantages we just discussed, very cheap material inputs and, you know, things like long cycle life um, really give it a leg up over the competition. There was a fun moment just days before we announced the investment. Um, the world's fastest production car is now a EV and it uses? LFP. There you go. It uses LFP yep. batteries. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Topped out at 496 kilometers per hour, where I always think, like, really, they couldn't get another four kilometers per hour to <laughs> smash the 500 kilometer per hour barrier. I am pretty sure they will get there, but um, that was fun to see. They'd use our material. <laughs> there you That's go. That's our goal. There you get go. that last four kilometers per hour. So, yeah. so um, where does the, uh, I mean, you mentioned China already. So, most of LFP today comes from China. Yeah, literally 99% of LFP is made in China today. Not a typo. 99% of LFP is made in China. It goes into half of all batteries. 99% of that material is made in China. That's wild. And do you believe that there's even a chance remotely to be able to be competing with Chinese producers on, on this? I think in order to compete... You can't have some incremental improvement upon the way that we're doing things to make LFP. You have to really look at it as like a blank slate opportunity and just com completely rework how that material is made. If you, you know, and that's exactly the approach we're ta taking. Um, if you're just doing one step better on the broader system that goes from like a lithium containing resource to LFP, it's not going to move the needle enough. China is going to have such a huge advantage on things like labor cost and scale, economies of scale and making the material that is not going to be competitive still. But we've completely reimagined how that supply chain looks and condensed what is traditionally about a 10-step process to go from a lithium-containing resource to LFP down to just three. That's the type of blank slate type improvement that we need to be able to compete on cost with how it's done in China. That We love that. That's... Um one of the many reasons why we invested. Um, hmm. And you just mentioned the input materials. What kind of input materials do you use and, and uh, do we have those in the US? Yeah, the iron and the phosphate are pretty abundant across the world. So um, really what you're trying to solve for when making LFP is getting more cost-effective lithium. That is the one critical mineral that is inherent in making LFP. Um, and that's why we've gone all the way upstream to start with processing the lithium resources, these natural saltwater brines that happen to contain lithium. Um, and we're iterating and figuring out a much cheaper way of getting that lithium chemical and then doing the downstream as well to make LFP from that. Um, that's what really unlocks our cost advantage. And where are you with this today? You know, when should we be expecting to be driving in an EV with a LFP battery that has LFP from Electroflow? So uh, as I was mentioning, we start all the way from that brine resource and our technology that does it is itself an electrochemical technology. So with the seed funding, we're aiming to get our electrochemical cell stack that does the extraction and conversion of lithium up to its ultimate module size. And... Uh, from there, then once we complete that, it's just copying and pasting that electrochemical cell to process more and more brine to make more and more LFP. Um, by the end of the seed period, our goal is to be at the tons per year LFP scale, um, which sounded wild if you asked me a year ago, but it's well within sight now, um, especially with the support of our new investors. So we're really excited for the year ahead and uh, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, we're going to be churning out tons of this material by the end of the seed period. So are you, um, are you hiring now? And uh, if so, um, what kind of people are you looking for? We'll be imminently hiring. Um, we're looking for folks, first of all, that are really pumped up about the mission to unlock much cheaper materials for batteries that can unlock energy abundance. Um, I think, yeah, maybe that message can get lost in all of this about geopolitics and like lithium and iron and phosphate. What we really care about is making the cheapest possible energy. And if we're able to achieve our goal of making this particular LFP material cheap, that is the key towards getting very abundant, very cheap energy. Um, yeah, because we get all this energy from the sun every day. We just need to be able to store it better. That's right. Yeah. 
Um, there's a huge fusion reactor in the sky, very reliable, comes out the same time every day, harnesses its energy well already from things called solar panels. Now we got to store that energy. So when the sun's not shining, we can still use energy. But really, yeah, like the jokes aside, the energy storage side is what's really holding us back from getting very, very cheap energy derived from solar and winds. Solar and winds are already very, very cheap. Cheap Solar is the cheapest form of energy we've ever made on Earth. Um, but yeah, we, we can't use it when the sun's not shining. We got to solve that problem and making cheap batteries is going to enable that. Yeah, we, we call it at USV the storage gap. Um, there's this sort yep. of widening gap between how quickly we're deploying um, renewable and intermittent resources and uh, at the scale at which we're producing batteries. And so Electroflow is a, is a key uh, ingredient to uh, helping close that gap. You mentioned you're, you want to hire people who are excited about this mission of energy abundance. Yeah. Um, what kind of skills are, are you looking for? What kind of backgrounds are you looking for? Um, we want folks who have worked with electrochemical cell technologies before. So this could be applications such as electrolyzers, fuel cells, some flow battery type technologies. Our technology is quite similar to many of the existing electrochemical cell technologies. And therefore, you can sort of translate your learnings from those industries to our particular technology as well. Um, we want their help on getting our big cell stack up to its ultimate size. This thing's going to be big, by the way. This is like a human-sized plus cell stack. Uh, one of the plates in our cell stack is about the size of me. So uh, put a bunch of those together, you get a pretty big cell stack. And we want folks who have seen that progression through, have been able to take something from, you know, lab scale all the way up to like production scale units that can go into the field. Um, that's one area of expertise we're interested in. Um, other maybe more niche things would be uh, automation engineers as well. We're going to um, have a mechanism in our technology where we want to be able to flip where some of the streams go. Um, and we want someone who's well-versed in being able to sort of automate the system, make valves turn the correct way, couple that to the applied currents as needed. Um, we also want folks that um, have roll-to-roll electrode fabrication experience as well. You can find this pretty often in the battery industry. Our technology, turns out, can use a lot of the learnings from the battery industry in order to manufacture it cost-effectively. Um, we're going to roll-to-roll process our electrodes in a way that's very reminiscent of how it's done in batteries. And we want folks that can help us use their skills from roll-to-roll fab in batteries in this new exciting application. Um, and definitely a host of other roles will be available, but those are some key ones that come to mind. What else uh, are you uh, particularly uh, focused on at the moment? What are you excited about? One thing that really excites me about how we're going to progress in the next year or so is we're going to make what amounts to a mini factory. Um, I just think that's awesome. Um, maybe these days factories have a bad name. Um, they're so-called dark factories in China, which actually means they're so fully automated that they even work when the lights are out. Like there's so little human intervention required. They just turn out the thing you're intended to build because of the high level of technology used in them. Um, we're going to make a really awesome next gen factory that can be able to make our cell stacks in a cost effective way. We have like some tape laid down in the warehouse for our big pieces of equipment already. And I'm just waiting for the day that those things are in their spots. Nice. We can see it all nice. to fruition. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, last question. What um, what do you and uh, Evan do to uh, just, you know, take the pressure off? Oh, man. Well, I'm lucky to have like really, really strong support from my wife. Um, she's amazing. No matter how stressful the current period is at the warehouse or you know, like converting a customer, like whenever I come home, like it's always great to talk it through with her and hear how her own day was. And um, I have a little dog as well that helps take the stress off. Um, a very cuddly dog named Puddle, who we cherish very much. Um, we love to take him to the dog park and on hikes and things like that and on little excursions to the beach and stuff like that. Um, Evan is really fond of his bike He's a big biker. He makes his own bikes, hence the building spirit that we've developed at the nice. company. Uh, and he loves really long bike rides with his spouse as well. So that's what we like to do when we're not building stuff at the warehouse. Eric, um, super excited about this next phase and uh, this conversation is to be continued. Sounds great. Yeah, Albert, thank you so much for your support and belief in us. We're really looking forward to working with you.